this council assault and commission statement uh, coming up over the, we have uh, Ms. Jourova with us. I have a procedural problem that I'd like to raise with you. The debate today is being carried out according to Article 123, Paragraph 1 of the Parliament's Rule of Procedure. And according to this rule, it is made very clear that uh, the debate that we're having today, for this debate, it is possible for the Council um, to be represented by members of the Council. But a decision has been taken, I think. The President of Parliament doesn't know the rules in Romania. According to the Romanian Constitution, uh, the President of Romania it would have been an appropriate representative for Council. He couldn't be here today. And then, in his absence, you would have had the Minister of Justice instead. And the Romanian Justice Minister is here with us today, in fact. And I think that for this kind of debate, to hear all of the necessary arguments, it would have been necessary to hear Minister Tudorel Tuader, who's also a member of the Venice Commission, so that he could answer the questions. And uh, I think it's a very grave thing. We're discussing important arguments here today, and all of the issues should be clarified here in the plenary. And it's important for democracy, for all Romanians, that here in the European Parliament, the Romanian Justice Minister should be able to give his explanations. And uh, that would be something that all Romanians uh, and all people would respect and be grateful for. So I would be very grateful to you, President, if uh, you could take account of that rule in the Rules of Procedure. And I'd be very grateful to you if you would give the Romanian Justice Minister the opportunity to answer the questions that have come forward in the debate. Thank you very much. Prego, collega. Well, colleague. Over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, having listened to the proposal, um, I'm of course very grateful that the Minister uh, for Justice is here. Um, and we are also very much looking forward to an exchange of views with the Minister for, fi uh, for uh, Justice in the Libe Committee. But so far, we have a procedure in this plenary that in this kind of debate, we invite the Prime Minister. An invitation has been sent to the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister, for uh, reasons of her own, could not be here today. But I don't think that we should change the rules or indeed the, the traditions on the spot. There will be a debate in Libe as well. It has been agreed in the Conference of Presidents to invite the Prime Minister for this debate and to have the exchange of views with the Minister for Justice in Libe. And I uh, suggest that we go ahead as has been agreed in the Conference of Presidents. Thank you. Noted. We asked for the Council to attend. They sent their representative, and uh, that's sufficient for us uh, to conduct the debate. Thank you. Back to the agenda. Commission and Council statements, uh, threats to the rule of law uh, due uh, uh, to the changes in the Romanian justice system. Over to you, Minister. Dear President, uh, Honourable Members, Madam Commissioner, you have invited the Presidency to intervene in this debate. First, let me say that common values such as democracy, equality, the rule of law and human rights are the cornerstone of the European Union. Each member state must therefore respect, protect and promote them. Let me assure you that the rule of law and the separation of powers have always been at the heart of the Council's attention. We believe that the dialogue and cooperation are necessary to ensure the best standards and conditions for our citizens in all our member states. The Council addressed the situation in Romania in its conclusions on the cooperation and verification mechanism adopted on 12 of December 2017. The Council welcomed the fact that Romania has taken a number, a number of positive steps and encouraged the country to renew the momentum on the reforms, in particular those related to the independence of the judiciary and to the fight against corruption at all levels. 
The Council reiterated the importance for Romania to focus on further consolidating progress and to fully address the concerns and all the recommendations set out by the Commission in its report on progress achieved under the cooperation and verification mechanism. We hope that the ongoing communication between the Romanian authorities and the Commission will continue to prove efficient in assisting Romania to remedy some shortcomings. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the uh, Commission, Ms. Jourova. Mr. President, honourable members, the discussion in Romania over the last year about its justice laws has led to concerns being expressed by a wide range of stakeholders, both inside and outside the country, across the EU and beyond. Romanian citizens have taken to the streets to state their opposition to the proposed changes to Romanian law and their concern that these may undermine the long-standing efforts in the fight against corruption and the independence of the judiciary. The Commission has made no secret of the fact that it shares these concerns. So too does the Council of Europe's anti-corruption watchdog, the Group of States Against Corruption, which for the first time has decided to launch its own inquiry with a report due in March. The independence of the Romania judiciary and its capacity to fight corruption are directly relevant to the progress made under the cooperation and verification mechanism, which, as you know, was set up in 2007 to assist Romania and Bulgaria in the fields of judicial reform and corruption, and for Bulgaria the fight against organized crime. After Ten years of continued efforts, Romania has one of the best judiciaries in the region. Back in January 2017, the Commission proposed a limited set of remaining recommendations which, if implemented fully and provided that there is no backtracking, would bring Romania out of the cooperation and verification mechanism. One of the recommendations called on the Romanian leadership to ensure a consensual legis legislative process to finalize reforms of the justice laws and the criminal codes and also to respect judicial independence and court decisions. On the 15th of November 2017, in our latest cooperation and verification mechanism report, the Commission voiced concerns on the process and the content of the draft ju justice laws. As the debate on justice laws was evolving in the course of 2017, the Superior Council of Magistracy, the constitutional guarantor of the independence of the judiciary, continued to voice concerns and issued a negative opinion citing detrimental impacts on judicial independence and on the effective functioning of the judicial system. These concerns need to be taken seriously in the legislative process. Therefore, the question we put to the Romanian authorities in the November report remains valid, namely, would the process take into account the legitimate interests of the judiciary and respect judicial independence? Unfortunately, we have continued to see open criticism of the judiciary and defiance of judicial decisions or integrity rules which do not inspire a feeling of confidence in the process. Events sin have done nothing to address these concerns. On the 21st December, the Parliament adopted amendments to the justice laws in a fast-track procedure, and the laws were immediately challenged in the Constitutional Court through three referrals. The Constitutional Court proceedings are ongoing, but in its first hearings it declared the unconstitutionality of some of the provisions. These are issues to be looked at carefully in relation to judicial independence and on which there are 
European standards. The Council of Europe's principle is that you cannot reform the judicial system against the judiciary. This common sense advice underpins the Commission's recommendation to the Romanian authorities that they consult the Venice Commission before the justice laws are promulgated. The Commission considers that it is still possible for the justice laws to be improved and become good laws which will strengthen the independence and professionalization of the Romanian judicial system at the service of all Romanian citizens. This is a crucial moment now that the first two draft laws are back in the Romanian Parliament following the rulings of the Constitutional Court. The debate on how to address the concerns expressed by the Constitutional Court should be used as an opportunity to have a good, frank dialogue and build a better shared understanding and trust among all concerned parties. Therefore, I reiterate the call made by President Juncker and first Vice President Timmermans to the Romanian Parliament to rethink the course of actions proposed, to open up debate in line with the Commission's recommendations and to build a consensus on the way forward and to safeguard the independence of the judicial system and further step up the fight against corruption. The President of Romania also has a key role in the process and from his meeting with the College last week, I know he takes that very seriously. The Commission stands ready to continue its ongoing dialogue with the Romanian authorities and will contribute as best it can to help ensure that this process is taken forward constructively and in a way that builds trust. We will look thoroughly at the final amendments to the justice law, the criminal codes and laws on conflicts of interest and corruption. As always, when dealing with these and similar matters, the Commission will remain objective, facts-based and law-based, politically colorblind and clinical in our approach. Honourable Members, Romania and Romanians have been running a marathon. The finish line is in sight. To step backwards now would be a major disappointment to Romania's many friends, but most of all to Romanian citizens. The speed with which Romania will reach the finish line is up to Romania, but the Commission stands by to help Romania get there. Thank you. Grazie, la commissaire. Thank you very much indeed, Commissioner. May I now open the debate, and we will first hear from the spokesman on behalf of the groups. During this section of the debate, there will be no blue cards allowed. On behalf of the EPP group, Ms. Metzula. The situation in Romania remains of concern. We have seen attempts by the government there to suppress the judiciary, to water down anti-corruption legislation, and to use its electoral majority as an excuse to do as it pleases. Now, I know that some people claim and will claim that the European Parliament and the European Commission should not get involved or try to spin the idea that this is somehow politically motivated. It is a justification that we are seeing used by unscrupulous politicians across the European Union who try to excuse the inexcusable. But they are wrong. The EU cannot look away, and for sure, the European People's Party will not. Because Romanians are not any less European than the rest of us. They deserve a country where the rule of law is respected, where corruption is fought, where the courts are protected, and where laws are not changed on a whim to suit only those in power. We all do. Now, Romanians have been on the street for more than a year, as the temperatures plummeted 
and the snow fell, they stood up. They flew European Union flags because they believed in Europe. A Europe that is not only an economic bloc, but a guarantee of common values and shared promises. They believe still. This is not only about Romania. This is about all of us. Every member state must understand that what happens in Bucharest affects people in Paris, just as what happens in Valletta affects people in Stockholm. We are distinct as nations, but we are intertwined all the same. And if the rule of law is at stake in any one state, then every single other state is endangered. And that is why the Commission is right to act as it must everywhere there is a threat. Now, I met with some of the people who are out on the streets of Romania. They are teachers and poets and students and pensioners. They are not politicians. They just want a country and a union where justice is blind, where everyone is treated equally before the law, where corruption is eradicated, and where winning an election does not mean you are entitled to divide up a country like your personal spoils of war. And I, I finish by saying thank you for standing up. Vau, Zim, Pestrada, we hear you. Thank you very much indeed. I don't want to have to remove the floor from anybody, but there are a lot of debates on the schedule until late tonight, so everyone has to stick to their speaking, t speaking time, I'm afraid. On behalf of the S&D group, Mr. Weidenholzer, who has one minute. Thank you. We in the S&D welcome today's uh, debate. This is the right venue for it. Rule of law, uh, democracy and human rights are at the forefront and the stability of Eastern Europe is close to our hearts. Uh, and um, uh, there is uh, economic growth going hand in hand with more democracy ideally. Romania is a significant country. It has major untapped potential. It's uh, important to, to express fundamental criticism. The readiness to take part in discussion means expressing the will also uh, to look for solutions and keep all doors open and act in a transparent manner. We welcome the fact that the Justice Minister was prepared uh, to attend today. Alas, uh, they cannot take part in today's debate. We know what progress was made last year in the justice reform. We have clear yardsticks to gauge whether this is uh, compatible uh, with the Constitution and uh, with uh, European acquis and whether European standards are being complied with, particularly uh, the standards of the Venice Commission. We will have success if we act uh, tangibly to solve the problems at hand. Thank you very much. Panie Przewodniczący, instytucje europejskie w ostatnich latach mają szczególną łatwość. The European institutions have taken great pleasure in intervening in the internal domestic affairs of some of the member states, even where this was not actually in alignment with the Constitution. Once again, we have to stop and realize that the European Union is supposed to be an alliance of sovereign states which have the right to run their country as they wish and have an independent judicial system. If society is not happy with what is happening in the country, then they will be able to hold the government to account at the next election. That is the way democracy works. Commissioner Jourova, you should not be appearing here as a professor dishing out lessons to a democratically election elected uh, government in Romania. That is not the way the European Union is supposed to work. Mr. Weidenholzer, I am sorry too that the Romanian Justice Minister is not here. It isn't as if this minister was not invited. I think that some of these radical approaches we have seen from outside to our legislation is inappropriate. Prego, a nome del gruppo Alde. Ms. Inetbelt, on behalf of the Alde group. Um, you know, I am 
of the generation, which I think has been marked by the events of the fall of the Berlin Wall and everything that happened afterwards. I can also remember the first time we welcomed colleagues from Bulgaria and Romania in this chamber, and I was very, very moved. I don't cry very often, I can tell you, but there were tears running down my cheeks. For me, this was reuniting the family. But in a family, we also talk about things that don't go well. Um, next year, Romania will be holding the presidency of the European Union. And of course, we'll all be looking at what image will Romania give. Now, I know Romania has a long and proud tradition of liberal democracy and civic engagement. And I hope that that is the path that Romania will choose. Uh, because contrary to the previous speaker, uh, I do think that values are a matter for the European Union. This is what we have laid down in the treaties. Um, Romania has made uh, very good efforts, very good achievements and progress in the last years. But now it seems to waver. And I would really encourage the Romanian government to follow the recommendations of the European Commission and to actually invite the Venice Commission to judge the, uh, the, the reform package and not just sort of refer loosely to some recommendations, but invite the Venice Commission. I also think it would be a good idea for a, a LIBE delegation to travel to Romania and talk to people and actually uh, find out and understand what's going on. Uh, on the reform of the judiciary, concerns have been expressed uh, all around. Uh, and I really, really hope that the Romanian government is going to, to take heed. Finally, uh, I would also like to refer briefly to the new legislation on civil society. I find that very worrying. This is happening not just in Romania or indeed Hungary and Poland, but also some other EU countries. And tonight we'll be talking about the shrinking space for civil society. Now, civil society may be a pain in the neck, but they are essential for a robust and healthy democracy. A democracy organizes its own critics. That's what democracy is all about. So please reconsider and finally chair the last sentence. I would re like to reiterate with this, Parliament has decided a year ago, year and a half ago, to not just focus on one country and then another, but install a mechanism, and I'm counting on the Commission, that assesses all the member states. Thank you. On behalf of the Greens, Ms. Keller has two and a half minutes. I hope that's enough. Thank you. Corruption is an evil that unfortunately still we have not overcome. And I think every single member state does have corruption. But the important thing is to recognize that and to work against it tirelessly and relentlessly because corruption actually undermines the very fabric of society. It makes people lose trust in state and a democracy. It also leads to big losses of public money and money that is urgently needed elsewhere. And in Romania, tens of thousands of people are on the streets against a corrupt political elite, an elite which sees itself as running a state as a sort of self-service uh, system and which misuses its power to protect itself from justice. And after significant progress that has been made by Romania leading up to the EU accession and in the years afterwards, now what we actually see is steps backwards. The progress is being reversed. And this is bad for the Romanian government, for the Romanian citizens, but also for the whole of the European Union. And Romanian citizens are EU citizens. And with the new laws, pr prosecutors are deprived of indispensable instruments for investigation. Courts are put under more political control and corruption is even partly decriminalized. And the new laws clearly have one objective, to weaken the legal system and to make it harder pr to prosecute high-level corruption. And we expect the Romanian government and the Romanian parliament to follow the court ruling and to make the laws compatible with EU standards and EU rules. Corruption has direct effects on citizens in Romania. We see this in the bad condition in many schools. We see this in hospitals where you risk actually getting more infections. We see coal power plants that run without a permit for years and with full knowledge of the authorities. And we see all this, as, and as Greens, we also came to Romania to speak with the authorities. We came to speak uh, with the citizens on the street. We wrote to the European Commission, and we also asked for this debate to happen. And I want to stress what I said before. Romanian citizens are European citizens. They have the same rights as every other European citizen. And that's why we, as Greens, cannot accept that Romanians are still being deprived of one of the most basic and fundamental freedoms 
of Europeans, that is to be a member of the Schengen Zone and to travel freely within the Union. We need to end the situation that Romanians are being stopped at borders that we thought we overcome. Romanians have the right to be free of corruption, to have a government that cares about public interest and to enjoy their European freedoms. Thank you. Grazie, Ska. Thank you, Ska. The next speaker is Mr. Revea for the ENF. Two and a half minutes. President, Commissioner, dear colleagues, an open channel of communication with the Romanian government will always be the best means of clarifying steps and procedures behind uh, sensitive legislative initiatives whilst fully respecting the rights and obligations of member states. And that is why now I want to quote the first two articles of the Romanian constitution. Article 1. Romania is a national state. It is sovereign and independent, unitary and indivisible. Romania is a democratic and social state governed by the rule of law in which human dignity, the hu citizens' rights and freedoms, and the freedom of human development and personality, justice, and political pluralism represent supreme values in the spirit of the democratic traditions of the Romanian people and the ideals of the revolution of December 1989 and shall be guaranteed. Article 2. National sovereignty shall reside within the Romanian people, which shall exercise it through its representative bodies, resulting from free, periodical, and fair elections, as well as by referendum. No group or individual may exercise sovereignty on its own behalf. Today, we are witnesses of the worrying politicization by a political group of a debate that should be seeking to do the opposite. It should be eliminating politics and encouraging assessments based on fact. The debate today is a valuable example. The rule of law is not a divine, unalterable creation, rather a human construct that should be maintained and continuously reformed, not just in Romania, but across Europe. And there is a but here. <laughs> The debates in the European Union level must not, be, must not be a substitute for finding solutions. President Juncker said this, so did President Johannes. We, the Romanian people, for Romania, in Romania, must find the solutions. Romania wants to align itself with European constitutional standards through an institutional dialogue that is viable. However, the European Union needs to understand that Romania is not a second-class country with second-class citizens. There are problems that have to be addressed. Nevertheless, Romania has shown political and civic responsibility addressing these problems in an open and thorough way. And we fought too hard to escape the Soviet Union to accept someone else ruling over us now. The big test we must put the political class to is to see if they are capable of good governance to ensure stability, uh, equilibrium, and social prosperity. And this test is one we must pass not for Europe, but for our children and future generations. Thank you very much indeed. We have now heard from the political groups and we'll now move on to hear from individual participants in the debate and blue cards will be allowed. Mr. Ungoriano, one and a half minutes. Pardon. Thank you. The PSD party claims it wants to overhaul the justice system in Romania. It wants to align justice to European standards. But who can believe this? Who can believe the PSD? Would you allow a thief to set the prices of goods in the shop where he is trying to steal? No, because he will tell you that everything is for free. European standards invoked by the PSD do not say that you can change the law just to protect yourself from it. Let's be clear. They won the elections after they promised money and prosperity and the world to everybody. And the first decision the government took was to amend the law on offences relating to cases brought against PSD leaders. The abuse of office was deleted and the threshold for embezzlement was raised. The, the changes brought about to justice mean that prosecutors are now subordinate to their bosses and uh, inquiries will be subject to a new scrutiny body. We've had two new governments in one year because they were not able to protect uh, their political leaders from the law. PSD parliamentarians have um, systematically rejected requests from prosecutors to investigate their political leaders and now these people are under criminal investigation are members of the government. Now, asked why the PSD has people in government who have legal proceedings against them, the party leader responded, because we can. But they forgot to say that because we can get away. That's the truth. The European Parliament needs to tell the PSD what it really is legal. 
They won the elections, but they didn't win over the justice system. This message should be sent not just to the Romanian government. And the idea that the rule of law is somehow linked to European funding is a fallacy. This would be to punish voters who have exercised their right to vote instead of punishing a government that is trying to force the law. Thank you. I think you've exceeded your speaking time. But, Mr. Unguriano, there is a blue card for you. Would you accept it? Would you accept a blue card, Mr. Unguriano? Ms. Rapini, your question. Thank you very much indeed, President. Dear colleague, now, let's put language to one side, but I have a concrete question for you. You know about the Constitution in Romania, and Article 51, 61 sorry, says very clearly that the Parliament is the supreme representative body of the Romanian people and the only authority for legislating. And the justice laws in Romania have gone through the Parliament after a public debate that lasted for months. Is that not true? Mr. Unguriano? Ah, evident. Well, yes, it's true. They did go through the Parliament. But this doesn't in any way resolve the problems that we have to uh, deal with today on the part of the uh, Romanian government. The people asked the government, why was this so rushed? Why did this have to come in so quickly? Um, is it not uh, involving the PSD leaders who are facing legal proceedings? Thank you. Bego. Thank you, Ms. Fayon. Tanya, you have one minute. Dear colleagues, Socialists and Democrats group have always been at the forefront when it comes to defending rule of law and democracy, and we fully stand by those principles today. Romania is one of the youngest democracies in Europe, and there are still pending issues. However, Bucharest showed its responsibility in addressing these issues in an open and inclusive way, which we strongly welcome. We trust Romania to fully resolve those issues alone through its own independent constitutional mechanisms and procedures which are in place, as well, as well with engaging in viable institutional dialogue also with international institutions and the EU. We should be critical when criticism is needed, but we firmly reject politicization of facts without objective consideration of reality. We want to clearly disassociate ourselves from any such attempts in this debate today and give room to dialogue. For us, the recent protests in Romania are a sign of healthy and democratic civic attitude and engagement towards the accountability of their politicians. Thank you. Honorable Stevens, Mr. Stevens, one minute. President, colleagues, this is not the first time that I have spoken about the problems in Romania. For example, the, uh, we've already seen the socialist and democrat government trying to tinker with the law on corruption for their own benefits. We have seen many similar instances. We've seen reform of company law, which is going the wrong way because companies are now able to have politicians on their boards. At the same time, the companies are being exempted from transparency rules and therefore the door is wide open to self-serving politicians and revolving doors. We have got to ensure that the country does not have a system where the rich can make themselves richer at the cost of society. Foreign investors will be deterred from investing in this country. Understandably, I'm happy to see a parliamentary debate on this and I think that there should be also parliamentary debate on the breaches of the law in Spain by the leaders there who have been elected in Catalonia. Thank you very much. Mr. Nicolai, one and a half minutes. The rule of law means that you have to have laws in application, ladies and gentlemen, and in Bucharest there is an intention to legislate because uh, this organisation on the justice laws does not involve laws in application, but we haven't had a proper debate on the Criminal Code and the Criminal Procedures Code. This is a debate today all about politics, not about the rule of law, and your concern is really all uh, fueled by partisan politics. 
much and do you really want to stop a national parliament to uh, exercise its right to legislate because it's uh, incorrect but the regarding commissioner the presumption of innocence and rights in the criminal procedure these surely are rights that the European Union supports you are also a guarantor of the treaties but can, madam commissioner what did you do when countless people were um, unfairly sent to jail what did you do then what did you do madam commissioner when countless citizens were um, intercepted outside of the law and when people were outside of the law somehow involved in all of these procedures what did you do madam Commissioner, when member states that privilege the right uh, of companies to uh, offer bribes in Romania were not properly dealt with. It seems to me a great shame, Madam Commissioner, but justice should be dealt with with good faith, honesty and proper uh, uh, procedure. Otherwise, we're totally undermining what's happening today. Thank you. It was Eva Jolie. One minute. Monsieur le Président. President, thank you. Colleagues, corruption kills literally, but it also kills metaphorically more insidiously because it exacerbates inequality and it saps the confidence of the citizens in their democracy. And it therefore fuels the rise of extremists. Anti corruption parties in Romania may exist, but the country is going backwards in the face of this scourge and the breach of the principles, the fundamental principles of justice. The Parliament ought to stand up for the country, which is now simply being run by a self-serving government, which is trying to sa save its own skin. The government, the Socialist Democratic government, has already been convicted of electoral fraud and mismanagement of European funds. The European Union must take cogent action and must ensure that it can accompany this country to rectify what needs to be rectified. After all, this country is supposed to take the presidency in 2019 and we must not abandon these millions of people who are out in the streets crying and shouting and demonstrating for justice and fairness. Thank you. Thank you. Mandanescu, one and a half minutes. Thank you very much indeed, President. Madam Commissioner, Romania is not guilty in this debate nor are the Romanian people. This is about a member of parliaments who have a, a majority and a government that is constantly in flux, that without uh, competence or accountability is pushing uh, Romania away from a normal course following the rule of law. Now, I understand that you met with the Justice Minister and I see that given what you said today, he hasn't convinced you. It's a pity that he wasn't able to speak in the plenary. Now, the Prime Minister, his boss, has been an MEP here. She knows the rules very well. She's attended similar debates here uh, where other uh, Prime Ministers came to participate in the debate and give their views. Now, the Romanian Prime Minister should be here today. And uh, it's not up to the Justice Minister to be here. Now, justice should be uh, independent and secure and uh, the magistrates should not be subject to political whims and in Romania according to professional organizations representing the magistrates and the Supreme Council of the Magistry, NGOs and other citizens, you know, the, the case is clear and I think it would be useful to have the Venice Commission's view on this. Madam Commissioner, once again, uh, a government shouldn't be able to push a country away from European values. And I think that there should be rules applied in this case by the Commission. There should be strings attached in terms of the European budget for uh, countries that deviate. But however, this would actually accept, um, affect the citizens of a country without properly punishing the government. So I don't think this should be part of the future MFF. Mr. Bocinaro, one minute. Madam Minister Panayotova, Madam Commissioner Yoroba, recently the Commission declared, and I quote, we are very familiar with the situation in Romania. Commissioner Yoroba, 
It seems, though, given what you said today, that either you don't understand the situation in Zemenya or you're turning away from certain factors. When it comes to the amendments, the solutions are actually fully aligned with the recommendations of the Venice Commission, the C Constitutional Court, and they're also inspired by uh, other solutions found in other member states. Now, I cannot believe that the solutions don't guarantee uh, justice and fundamental rights in Europe. How would they somehow be unacceptable in, Euro in Romania, these solutions? Are we just a second-rate country? The Commission also says that, uh, that the evaluation of the three laws that have already been adopted, given what might happen in the future, it does not give us any real reference, though, do you? You're not giving us any paragraph or detail uh, in the legislation that somehow is undermining the independence of the justice system or stymieing our fight against corruption. Just two points, President. There is apparently a secret protocol between the Anti-Corruption Directorate and the Secret Services. Uh, apparently, then, there has been a politicization of these services in Romania. This has, this has been known about. Why hasn't anything been done about it? Apparently, there were abuses carried out by the Anti-Corruption Directorate. So, did you know about this? Has anything been done about this? That is why, Commissioner, I believe that before you speak on these matters. I think you should go and look for information elsewhere. Thank you very much. Victor. Victor, as I said, I do not want to have to remove the floor from anybody, but if you are given one minute speaking time and you're speaking for two minutes, it doubles the time of the entire debate, and that's not fair on colleagues. And I'm addressing this comment to everybody. Everybody. You're all overrunning your speaking time, every single one of you, frankly, including my friend Marinescu. So come on. Let us have a more responsible attitude from now on. You have allocated speaking time. Kindly adhere to it. It is your responsibility. It should not be my responsibility to have to get you to stop speaking or to remove the floor or the microphone from you, ultimately. McAvey, two minutes. Thank you very much. The Romanians have been clamoring in the streets. We want justice, not corruption. The Romanians want to be in Europe, and we want this too. We want to be in Europe. The PSD and ALDI want to push us out of Europe, and they have triggered this fight for corruption against the justice system, against the rule of law. Now, this coalition and the Justice Minister sent here as a representative of the government, he's somewhere in this house now, are ashamedly lying to the Commission and the Parliament by saying that these changes are somehow going to transpose European directives. That's not true. The directive on the presumption of innocence on uh, 2014 has not been transposed to date, and that's very bad. But that's a directive that sets out much higher standards for the presumption of innocence. Uh, in fact, we have a innocence which is much better protected in Romanian existing law than in the directive. So, you know, let's not forget this is a lie. Then, what do they want to do with the changes to the criminal code? This is very important for the member states because uh, they will be uh, affecting judicial cooperation in a cross-border way for cross-border crimes and they will also affect, uh, be affecting how crimes in one member state and others are dealt with. And that might mean that Romania some s becomes some sort of haven for uh, criminals. So if you receive a complaint, then you'll actually be told that uh, you are going to be investigated. Uh, but these cases will be able to be dealt with uh, with a sleight of hand. And then there might be uh, in access to information about other crimes as well. If you're involved in child pornography, then you should actually have this information destroyed. There won't be a way to verify this. And things won't work properly. There won't be proper evidence available for these investigations. Now, I had two minutes. 
and I want to have as much time as Mr. Bolsonaro to speak. I'm speaking for my country, not for my party. I'm speaking for my country, not for my party. No, I'm sorry, that's enough. No, 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 no. No, I'm not going to accept this any longer. This is not acceptable. You simply can't take advantage of my patience in this way. I will not accept it. Ms. McAvey, I have asked you please to finish your speech. I, you have no longer have the floor. Ms. Faber, you have one and a half minutes. Dove Weber? Is Ms. Faber in the chamber? No funciona. Ah, oh, sí. Dress colleague, I'm Dear colleagues, I've heard a lot of lies in my lifetime, but uh, I think Mrs. McAvey has really just exceeded all limits. When people are reacting to big debates, that's something we should welcome because that means there's civic participation, which is natural. The European Commission is interested in what's happening in a member state here, and that is also something that's natural because in the European Union we all belong to a large family, but equally natural is the fact that we need to look at institutional mechanisms in a member state to see how legislation is adopted in accordance with the requirements of the rule of law. And in Romania, this mechanism exists and it works. We have a constitutional court which uh, delivers opinions which are mandatory for parliamentarians and all legislation has to be aligned with those opinions. We have a constitutional court that despite criticism leveled over time is independent and this has been proven with the decisions taken by a number of different governments and we have a president in Romania who is opportunistic in his scrutiny for um, he can look at a law before sending it back to the parliament uh, and is able to um, explain why this might undermine the independence of the justice system. These are democratic mechanisms. I think we should have faith in them. However, this doesn't exclude the possibility of assessing legislation. Uh, done. This assessment could be done by the Venice Commission in an objective way because what we want here is a legislation and a justice system which serves the interests of the Romanian people. Minuto e trenta. Mr. Kelly, one and a half minutes. Uh, uh, coming from Ireland, uh, who had a great difficulty in adapting from being colonised and then becoming independent. In fact, we had a, a civil war. So Romania was trying to come from a time when they were under the control of the USSR. So I can understand a certain amount of friction and ups and downs, etc. But nevertheless, they were deemed to, to advanced enough to join the European Union, which is a very clear set of values. And if we feel that those values are being breached in any way, it's only right, firstly, that we will discuss it here in the European Parliament, and secondly, that there should be some type of sanction if an independent analysis shows that that's the case. And certainly there have been grave doubts expressed here, and rightly so, about the transparency, the lack of uh, dealing with corruption in uh, Romania, and also, especially, the independence of the judiciary. These are things we cannot ignore. I think it's probably a bit simplistic to blame the Commission here for not doing more. Maybe they should do more. But also I think we have to look at the tools in terms of if there are certain breaches, what sanctions kick in. It's very uh, understandable that people would say you shouldn't uh, blame the people or penalise the people. But how do you actually penalise the government without penalising the people? I, I, nobody has answered that. So there is need for clarity in this. There is need for sanctions as we go forward, and there's definitely need to ensure that no country uh, is allowed to have uh, the, some of the lack of transparency, corruption, and the independence of the judiciary that has been challenged in Romania. Honorable Mr. Moraes, one minute. Thank you, President. Dear colleagues, um, we heard from a previous speaker about whether the institutions had been involved on Romania, my understanding is that Romania has been working to achieve the process of judicial reform since the accession treaty and the institutions have been continually involved. We have a debate today, uh, the Justice Minister will come before the Libe Committee shortly um, and I agree with colleagues who say it would be better if he were in a position to answer many of the detailed criticisms today but I understand the rules. 
And I broadly agree with what Mrs. Payon and indeed Mrs. Intervelt were saying, which is we should acknowledge what progress has been made. We should acknowledge this is not a black and white debate. And we should acknowledge, of course, now that there are clear pending issues and criticisms. But there should be a room now for dialogue. And I think most sensible people in this debate would understand that. There are still the pending issues, but self-criticism has been made. And with an independent constitutional mechanism in place, Rom Romania can and has displayed uh, a willingness to have viable institutional dialogue. Le Diacuno, Mirce. Diacuno, 90 seconds. Thank you very much, Madam Kishner. First of all, an observation. The Justice Minister who is in this building is actually a member of the Venice Commission. Now, it's true that I have to confess that I'm concerned about the rule of law in Romania. I think there are problems there. About 10 years ago, we modified the justice laws without a proper public debate through uh, a fast-track procedure. And uh, there was also the possibility that uh, um, magistrates would not be held to account, just like we're seeing in Poland, Poland today. Now, there are many uh, uh, problems that have gone to the Human Rights Court, uh, the European Court of Human Rights, to deal with this. So there is a problem with the rule of law in Romania. Now, this year, we've had uh, a number of rulings on Romania. In 2015, for example, there were 16 or more requests for uh, tapping, wiretapping, and listening cases more than we had for the FBI. And then, if you look at the last parliamentary elections, apparently um, there were security issues analogous to uh, terrorism. So this actually happened for certain candidates and other uh, politicians. Apparently there are terrorists in Romania, and then they just disappeared overnight. Now, in a country where there actually are no terrorists at all, this is what happened. There's no, been no act of terrorism either. But uh, after the elections, they just disappeared. So, yes, there are problems with the rule of law in Romania. Now, and according to our constitution, the parliament has the power to deal with these problems uh, for the citizens. And they're not asking for the uh, adoption or approval of anybody, and they cannot be uh, corrected by anybody but the constitutional court. Now, as far as for the rest, there's nothing else to say. And I'll stop here. I just want to say that I would want to see more independence for the justice system, particularly in Romania. Go ahead. Mr. Coelho, a minute and a half. Thank you, President. The EU is based on values, on the rule of law, for the benefit of all Europeans. Re recalling this Europe for citizens is not a mere platitude, uh, but an essential starting point when we are discussing serious decisions made by member state governments. Today we are debating and calling out the actions of the Romanian government. We are not condemning the citizens, quite the opposite. It's important to make plain that we are standing up for these citizens and broadly standing up for all European citizens. Therefore, we call upon the Romanian government to respect the fundamental values of its country and of our union. In no member state can we allow the undermining of the independence of the judiciary, which is essential for the smooth running of a democratic society. In no member state can we allow corruption uh, to go uncombated. It needs to be sanctioned vehemently. In no member state can we allow criminal law uh, to be tweaked for one's, for one's own benefit. President, what is being done by the Romanian government and its leaders is not acceptable. I would uh, therefore call on us to be clear in calling uh, in supporting the European Commission and supporting what it has done to support the, the government. I want to be uh, clear. We can never yield ground in what is essential for the EU, which is a project of citizenship based on the rule of law. Thank you. Lopez Aguilar. One minute. Fernando. We, the members of the socialist and democratic family in this house, we do truly care about the rule of law, separation of power, and independence of the judiciary. And, of course, we understand legitimate concerns. Every time there is a risk of breach of the rule of law, regarding a judicial reform in a member state. But having said this, it is fair to state that each and every act of this package of reform has been an answer to previous rulings of the Constitutional Court, the Romanian Constitutional Court, that 
there has been a preventive exercise of constitutional reviews of, the, of those acts and the Romanian government has shown readiness to comply by the rulings of the Constitutional Court. And this reform aims to enhance the accountability of judges in a country which ranks first in violations of Article 6 of the European Court uh, of Human Rights. Also enhances the presumption of innocence regarding the respect which is due by the members of the public prosecutor. And finally, it is important to break the misuse or political abuse of the links between the judiciary and intelligence services. That is why many of us do not believe that this package of reform poses a serious threat or systemic breach of the rule of law in that member state, which is Romania. Grazie, onorevole Boni. Mr. Boni, minute and a half. Madam Commissioner, Mr. President, democracy requires transparency, separation of powers, independent judiciary system and justice, which should never be bent to serve short-term political tactics or vested interest of individual politicians. This is the only way to build public trust and encourage citizens' participation the fundament of democracy. I see thousands of Romanian people protesting in the streets. I see Romanian citizens full of concerns about their country and the justice. I know that there is no possibility to create trust where corruption is all around. I see some efforts done by the government to strengthen the independence of the judiciary system. It is not sufficient. And I continue to see the government watering down anti-corruption laws in Romania and playing the unfair game with the society and with all of us, the European family, family which is based on the rule of law, fundamental values, politics free of corruption. Romanian citizens, please be brave, be vigilant, don't give up. Romanian politicians, be open to your society, be honest. Only this attitude can bring real political profits, true profits, not money. European Commission, be strict and at the same time open for dialogue. European Union without values will lose its moral, political and real power. Per lei c'è blue card. There's a blue card, Mr. Boni. No. No, sorry. No. Mi dispiace, onorevole Paolo. I'm sorry, but that's not uh, accepted by Mr. Boni. Mr. Pascu, one minute. Since 2005, Romania got a law system based on vague, subjective, interpretable and discretionary laws, supported through secret protocols by the intelligence services. Why secret if they are constitutional? Uh, and uh, services which were ousted from the judiciary process immediately after the revolution. Consequently, the anti-corruption struggle was easily abused, being transformed into an instrument directed against political adversaries and economic competitors, transferring the power from those elected to those appointed. As a result, in the last two years, the media is full of the abuses committed in the anti-corruption struggle, and the courts have declared inadmissible an increasing number of cases submitted by the anti-corruption prosecutors. And now, when the Romanian parliament is obliged to correct a number of articles declared unconstitutional by the Constitutional Court, eliminating their subjectivity, the sovereignty of the Romanian people is being questioned. In the end, I would like to ask our critics why should the Romanians feel more under surveillance now in democracy than during Ceausescu's time? Thank you. And now I give the floor to Mr. Buda. Thank you very much indeed, President. Now, I understand this isn't the happiest day of my life, but the progress made by Romania since 2007 in the process of consolidating the rule of law and the independence of the justice system, but also in fighting against corruption, is unequivocal. However, the PSD-LD government is demonstrating that this progress is not irreversible. 
The legislation process followed by the current parliamentary majority has tried to subordinate the justice system to political powers and there's also been a lack of transparency in the debate on these amendments which has pushed hundreds of thousands of people into the street and uh, this is obviously a clear fact. At the same time there's been a strong reaction from the Italian magistrates profession who are opposed to these changes but there have also been serious and legitimate concerns expressed by the European Commission. Nobody can contest the right of the Parliament to legislate but the current PSD Aldi government has to understand one thing that you cannot play with the Romania's European destiny. The independence of the judiciary in Romania, the capacity to combat effectively against corruption and the predictability of legislation and also the existence of mechanisms that guarantee rights and fundamental freedoms of citizens must become an indestructible reality and make up the foundations of a strong Romania within the context of the European Union. That is why I believe that at this moment we need to launch a broad process of public consultation with the magistrates associations, with civil society and, and at the same time we have to identify a functioning model at the level of the EU member states but also engage in consultation with the Venice Commission to get uh, the basic aspects of the justice reform. Thank you. Mr. Nika for one minute. President, Madam Commissioner, unfortunately today many untruths have been expressed and uh, you know we face a difficult situation here but what can we say now? I think it's a pity that the Justice Minister wasn't able to speak and uh, you know you're talking about having a Prime Minister here who isn't a member of the Council and who hadn't received an information. Now th there is a clear motive here. You weren't really interested in the debate today. There's been no real argument. You're not in a situation to properly criticize us because you're not citing any particular article or paragraph either it's not clear. There have been colleagues who have lied today. They've misinformed you, Madam Commissioner. And uh, I'm, if you had accepted uh, a discussion with the Minister, perhaps you would have drawn another conclusion. Now, the laws that you're talking about have been declared constitutional by the Constitutional Court. So how can that not be known? There were countless amendments that were actually uh, approved by the magistrates but unfortunately you're not actually interested in these details. This is just about politics and grandstanding and uh, it's very unfortunate. Thank you. Mr. Turkis, one minute please. Tisztelt elnök úr, kollégák, üdvözlöm a Rom President, dear colleagues, I'm glad, I'm glad that this has been put on the agenda. It was high time for uh, the uh, Commission to uh, forsake double standards uh, and taking action not only against Poland and Hungarian, introducing in, in, uh, procedures due to infringements of rule of law against them. This also there also needs to be action taken against the Socialist Government of Romania. In the press conference in Brussels, Klaus Johannes uh, said he was in favour of the Romanian judiciary remaining independent previously. Ms. D'Angela, the Head of State, uh, declared that the independence of the judiciary should not be infringed upon and the people have been protesting uh, for a whole year. Hundreds of thousands have protested saying that the judiciary should not be subordinate to do politicians. We are talking about post-communist and post-socialist uh, 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 parties which are corrupt. Nobody should be above the law. Uh, Dragny has already uh, been um, ruled against. He's an. Uh, it is an uh, olig oligarch we're dealing with. Uh, the Hungarian minority wishes to uh, co co cooperate um, with the Romanian authorities for the restoration of rule of law. Mr. Breda. 
Thank you very much indeed, President. Mr. Bolsonaro was saying earlier that we're a second-rate country. I don't think that's true, but we actually have a, a seventh-rate government. If that wasn't the case, we would have had a Prime Minister here this afternoon. We would have had Mrs. Dunchila here. She was brought into office, and she was, we were told at the time that she was a key person in the European institutions. And then when she has the opportunity to come and defend her government, she's afraid to come and she stays at home. Now, there's Mr. Tuada, the Justice Minister. He is actually a member of the Venice Commission. That's true. I don't know why he's not here. And then M President Juncker and others had a, uh, uh, talked about the need for a consultation with the Venice Commission, and Mr. Tuada was the first one to say, no, that, that wasn't necessary. You know, basically, there is a disregard for the Commission. The members of uh, PSD, Aldi, are saying that, uh, no, there isn't information, that this is all lies, and so on, but yet, at the same time, they're defending corruption, they're defending plagiarism, they're promoting uh, I illiterate politicians. So, this is a situation where... You know, we have to ask the following. Are you not ashamed, members of the PSD? Mr. Preda, you have a blue card from Mr. Bostunaru. Do you accept it? President, I don't know if colleague Preda is worthy of a blue card, but I would just like to uh, ask him about apparently this shame that he mentioned. Mr. Preda, did you lead to your f listen to the speech of your former boss, Mr. Vasescu, about laws and electoral laws in Romania? What did he say about the justice system in Romania? Thank you. Yes, I'm used to attacks against personal individuals, but uh, they're making out that uh, Mr. Basescu is the ultimate evil and uh, instrumentalizing this. This is something new. I know that there are no bounds for these people, the members of the PSD, but I remain convinced that I think we should be honest and consistent. You know, if you say one thing here, then you say something or the opposite at home, that, that's not good. You're, you're defending people who are corrupt, who have been convicted, who have been sent to court, and you're proposing and propo encouraging people in uh, government who are illiterate, uh, who have been stealing billions of uh, euros. The speaker is cut off. No, I won't give the floor to anybody. Nobody has the floor now. I know that it is a heated discussion, but I'd like to ask all colleagues to help me. I have accepted 11, I have received 11 uh, demands for catch the eye. I will give the floor to all of them. But I'd like to ask those who will take the floor to respect their time, the one minute, very strictly, because we've already overrun a lot. Mr. Pospisil, one minute. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I was the Minister of Justice for five years in the Czech Republic. I was responsible for uh, judicial reform. So perhaps uh, I can tell you uh, a few comments on that. Uh, the uh, Romanian uh, reform to me is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, the consequences will be that corruption will be very difficult uh, to investigate. Uh, we have uh, short terms for reporting corruption, uh, the uh, kind uh, how uh, the interrogations should be conducted, and so on. I'm uh, really not very happy that our socialist colleagues are not uh, ready to look at it objectively, and they only go alongside the party line. Uh, we have criterions how to proceed against corruption, and the judicial reform goes against it. So it's like in Poland. As President Juncker said last week, 
we shouldn't be talking about disregard for the rule of law in Romania. And the justice laws are fully aligned with the decisions of the uh, Constitutional Court, Commission rec recommendations, and the Court of Human Rights rulings as well. So there has never been a problem in Romania in the past in terms of aligning with constitutional court decisions. But there are two sets of controls. First of all, that controlled by the court, constitutional court, and then there's the scrutiny of the president as well. What is happening today in Romania is a perfect example of democratic process. There is an involvement of civil society and also informal representative society. In 2018, we're celebrating our centenary. We want to celebrate, and we want, with everybody else, to strengthen our possibilities of celebrating in Romania. And this is a natural debate in a strong democracy, but internal debates should not be brought to the level of the European Parliament and uh, made uh, uh, false. Have have. We shouldn't have false claims made about them as well, particularly uh, in the year of our centenary. Thank you. Our next speaker is supposed to be Mr. Marias, but I can't see him in the chamber, so we'll cross that name off. Mr. Moreshan, one minute, please. Mulțumesc. Doamnă comisar, stimați colegi, 600 de mii de oameni în stradă împotriva guvernului. Credeți că guvernul face lucruri? Thank you very much. We're talking about 600,000 people who are on the streets, who are uh, protesting there's a big discrepancy between what people want and the uh, reality of uh, democracy, rule of law, European values. The uh, politicians who are manipulating the situation, who are weakening the institutions, that's the problem. There was a uh, electoral uh, fraud that was involved for the Speaker of the Parliament. Do you think this is something that strengthens democracy? No, this is something which weakens democracy. The Romanians who are out on the street, we need to be able to send them a message to say what you're doing is visible, it's important, Europe is aware of the situation and uh, we know there are honest politicians and corrupt politicians, and we are on the side of the honest ones. Ms. Grappini, one minute, please. Mulțumesc, domnule președinte. O să vreau să Thank you very much, President. I'd like to thank the representative of the Council who has given a, a clear position, but while uh, keeping within their diplomatic uh, niceties, Commissioner, I think you can see a very graphic uh, display of how the debate has gone, what amendments have been tabled against the magistrates, the judges, etc. And it's absolutely necessary that this judicial bill be changed. I mean, the very title of it, the reform of justice, would, have, would undermine the rule of law. Um, so... We're looking at a legal package where many unconstitutional articles have been included. And uh, that's why this anti-constitutional uh, amendments need to be withdrawn. It's uh, thousands of people who uh, would be put in prison because of the McAvoy law. Thank you. Mr. Shogor, one minute, please. The anti-corruption fight and the strengthening of rule of law in Romania needs constant effort. However, it is also important to send messages to encourage. It's also important to pay attention to indications and criticism from accusations relating to politically affiliations to the head, uh, of the heads of institutions through unjustified illegal links to secret services. Abuses in certain specific cases do happen. It is important to modify, to amend the judicial system, but that should be for the benefit of the um, voters and not weaken the tools to fight the law, uh, fi uh, the tools to fight the corruption. And it is also not a good idea to see a political attack against the judicial system in every paragraph. The EU should not only 
monitor the Romanian uh, justice uh, judicial system from the point of view of fight against corruption, but also to oversee the principles of the rule of law. Because masses of citizens feel that the judicial system is lacking in this part. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tapardel, one minute. Thank you very much. Chairman, there is a concentrated, concerted campaign of disinformation against Romania where the legitimate actions of a national parliament are being called into question. What we see today is an attempt by the law to respect the rights of the citizens of Romania and there's the rule of the presumption of innocence, of course, which is being applied. There have been thousands of lives destroyed in Romania for a failure to protect this principle before. People's careers have been ruined, public careers in some cases, on the basis of very flimsy evidence. And many of the actual cases were not pursued at the end of the day. This now is a package of laws which was been, has been discussed for months by national parliament and other bodies as well. The amendments proposed are the result of that whole consult consultation process. Thank you, Ms. Franzulica. One minute. Mr. President, I would like to ask uh, Madam Commissioner that expressed today so many concerns and objections on the three laws governing the justice system that were amended uh, in January in Romania in the Parliament. Why, Madam Commissioner, you didn't express any concerns or any objections when in 2016 the Cholos government, the so-called experts government, but in, in reality uh, a right government, um, uh, issued an emergency ordinance to amend and supplement the penal code and the code of criminal procedures amending 114 articles, uh, Madam Commissioner. Uh, in this way, amended in a non-transparent manner and without debate or public consultation, without the competent authorities and all interested parties being able to propose amendments and or formulate technical observations. Why, Madam Commissioner? Because the political correctness put you to the same... Thank you, Mr. Vanzulika. Ms. Gomes, one minute, please. I've been to Romania last November to speak about the Portuguese prohibition of bearer shares. Met with Romanian NGOs and journalists, was impressed with their high quality and commitment. And it pains me to hear that a draft law that was endorsed by the uh, Romanian Senate in the meantime is actually closing the space for civil society. They work, these NGOs and journalists, to expose and stop corruption. This debate should actually be about the fight against corruption in Romania. And it, because the justice system, despite the, the constraints, seems to be working. And so is the Romanian National Anti-Corruption Directorate, which, uh, working together with Olaf, concluded that uh, the leader of the ruling party, PSD, Mr. Livio Dragna, is responsible for grave fraud with EU funds, of creating an organized crime, uh, criminal group uh, for that purpose, and of misusing his position for personal gain. I'm reading from the Olaf's report that is in the sight of Olaf. It's a report of, uh, it's a press release of the 13th of November. So my question to Romanian colleagues and the government, and I wish the minister could speak, is how come Thank you, Ms. in relief of his position in the parliament and the uh, Next speaker, Mr. Pavel, one minute, please. Please respect the presidency. Estimate, Mr. Commissar, Colegii dumneavoastră, președintele Juncker și comisarul Timmermans, s-au rotat în... Your colleagues, uh, Mr. Juncker, Mr. Timmermans, have uh, inquired uh, as to the um, situation in Romania with regards to these changes in laws uh, without the assent of the Constitutional Court. Uh, this is serious uh, interference into the uh, matters of Romania. You are 
supporting this, and it appears the European Parliament is not in agreement. There are 20 uh, members uh, who appear to be concerned about the situation in Romania. I have listened very attentively to what is happening here. Uh, we seem to be having a very heated debate. I think we need to explain what's happening here. We need to have transparency uh, to understand the decisions made by uh, colleagues in uh, different countries. Uh, there were abuses in uh, these countries in the past. Romania and Bulgaria are meant to uh, go into Schengen. Mr. Christea, one minute. But before you take the floor, sir, it's been decided that I won't give any more blue cards in the catch the eye procedure. Ms. McAvoy has been asking for one. I have the right to rule in that way, so I'm just informing Ms. McAvoy that we're really a long time behind, so uh, p please no more blue cards. Mr. Christea, one minute. Domnule președinte, vă mulțumesc. Thank you very much, President. Well, the fact that today we're talking about the situation in Romania, about my country, and that people are talking in such apocalyptic terms about Romania, uh, maybe because they haven't understood, or maybe they just want to denigrate Romania, I don't know. But this is a key moment uh, within the European uh, Union about how the financial instruments are going to be reformed for the period after 2020. And there's a, a, a false idea that uh, conditionality will be brought in uh, with um, abuse of the rule of law. Well, don't forget, Romanians are European citizens. We're good European citizens who show solidarity. We represent the and espouse European values. We have uh, a rule of law in uh, uh, Romania without any abuse of the checks and balances systems in place. Mr. Preda, you seem to only want to suggest that that's not the case. Thank you, Mr. Cristea. That brings Catch the Eye to an end on this debate. I now to turn to Commissioner Yurava on behalf of the Commission. Mr. President, honourable members, I would like to thank the European Parliament for having this debate. This debate is not about the Commission or the Parliament. It is about justice for Romanians who have legitimate expectation that there is independent and efficient justice for them in Romania. However, you, some of you mentioned or questioned on the role of the Commission, so let me reiterate that the role of the Commission is to fulfill the obligation of the guardian of the treaty. It is our duty to assess the situation of rule of law in each member state and to raise the concerns when we see systemic problems. Justice system is a sophisticated and complex structure calibrated on the basis of legal traditions, fulfilling the principle of balanced powers in the state. Such system is built over decades and can be destroyed in a week or overnight. That's why we are so vigilant and that's why we raise the concerns at this moment. We are assessing objectively the Romanian system on the basis of evidence and facts. We are offering dialogue and support. This is what we do. What we do not do, because we must not do that, is interfering into individual cases, just to respond to the question of Madame Nicolai. The independence of Romania's judicial system and its capacity to fight corruption effectively are essential cornerstones of a strong Romania in the European Union. After 10 years of hard work, Romania has a professional judiciary and the population of Romania has been clear in its support for the fight against corruption. And I am confident that all the Romanian authorities fully realize this and will do what is necessary to bring the draft laws into line with the Constitution and send a strong signal that will help rebuild trust. 
and the commission stands by to help romania in this endeavour however and whenever that is useful thank you thank you madam commissioner on behalf of the council i give the floor to ms paniotova Thank you very much, Mr. President, honorable members, ladies and gentlemen. Let me assure you once again that the Bulgarian presidency and the council as a whole attach great importance to upholding the rule of law and fundamental values within the European Union. The council will continue to follow this debate closely and the presidency will pay particular attention to the views which were expressed here today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That closes the debate. The next item on the agenda is a joint debate on EU external action funds. In particular, the uh, report on the guarantee fund for external actions and the guarantee to the EIB against losses under financing operations supporting investment projects outside the Union.